Rendering takes forever, so let's look at some ways that we can make it take not forever. That's a good sentence, Grant. Hey everybody, welcome back to another weekly episode here on the CG Cookie Blender Training YouTube channel. This is kind of far away from me. There we go. This week, we're gonna be looking at some ways that you can optimize your Blender projects so they don't take nearly as long to render. Some of these tips and tricks you might have heard before, but still it's worth going over them for the people who might not. So anyway, let's go ahead and hop right into it. So this is the project we're going to be working with. It's a short 200 frame animation of my character Jim sitting at his desk. This is actually the file we used to do the uh, realistic camera shake episode last week. Uh, so now we're going to be actually rendering it out and optimizing it properly. So with that being said, I'm going to hit F12 and we're going to see how long it takes to render. One eternity later. We just finished up our render here, and you can see it took two minutes and 17 seconds, converting that to sentence. Uh, converting that. <laughs> I cannot talk. Converting that to seconds, that's about 120 plus 17, 120 or 137 seconds, right? So that's our unoptimized scene, and I put it down here in the render times. So let's go ahead and go through and look at some things that we can do to optimize our scene properly. The first thing is to not render with CPU and render with a GPU. Now, one thing you should note is that not all computers have a GPU. A GPU is a graphics processing unit or also called a video card or a video chip, right? Um, and sometimes computers don't have those. In this case, I have a 1050 Ti in this computer, so I'm going to enable that. Uh, if you wanna figure out if you have one, you can figure it out pretty simply just by following along. And if you can follow along, then you have a graphics card. Um, but first we need to open up user preferences. So in order to do that, I'm going to press control alt U and this will open up our user preferences thing here. I'm going to come to the system tab over here. And in the lower left, we have this option that says cycles compute device. If you have an option that says either CUDA or OpenCL, click that. And when you do click that, that's, this is, if you don't have a GPU, you won't be able to click anything. You won't have anything there. Uh, so that's kind of how you can tell. But if you do have something there, click whatever option that is, and then select the graphics card from the list. In this case, it automatically selected my GeForce GTX 1050 Ti uh, from the menu, so I can just click Save User Settings. That way it automatically selects it every single time Blender starts up, and now we're good to go. So I can go ahead and exit out of this. Now, one thing that's important is you're still not rendering with your GPU. All that happened there is Blender just registers it as existent, if that makes any sense. So in order to actually render with our GPU, we need to come over here into our properties panel and change our render device from CPU to GPU compute. Now we are rendering with our GPU. The next thing that we need to take care of is light bounces. Light bounces are how many times a virtual photon will bounce around in the cycles rendering engine because it is a path tracing engine. So uh, in order to optimize our light paths, we need to first come over to the light paths drop down in our rendering settings section here of our properties panel. And we need to limit the bounces. So right now the max bounces is set, as t set at 12 and the minimum is set at three. So I'm gonna change the max bounces to four because I've noticed throughout my Blender experience, four bounces is enough to properly light a scene. Uh, additionally, we're gonna set the minimum amount of bounces to zero. And while this will speed up our render a little bit, it also increases the noise, but it's really nothing that we can't deal with. All right, so diffuse and glossy are already set to four bounces by default, so we won't need to change those, but I will change the transmission bounces down to four, just because we don't really need the light to be able to pass through transmission objects that much. And for clarification, transmission objects are things like glass, something where light can enter and leave through the object. The next thing we're gonna do is drop down our transparency from eight, or the max transparency from eight to four and the minimum to zero. And again, this has the same effect that limiting our bounces does where it adds a little bit more noise in the name of time, I guess. Uh, so keep that in mind when you're dropping that. If for whatever reason your noise peaks, change it up to four, that way it's equal. Uh, but we really shouldn't have to worry about that too much. So the last thing we can do in the light path settings here is change reflective and refractive caustics off. And reflective and refract refractive caustics are basically, I really wish I had something, actually here, we'll, we'll try and do this. No, maybe, possibly, please. Nope, doesn't look like I can replicate it. Um, <laughs> basically what reflective and refractive caustics are, uh, are 
It's, it's when light reflects or refracts off something and it is projected. And it's more of a, a physics deal or deal kind of thing. Uh, but basically, if you do have something that's very reflective in your scene, such as like a mirror ball that's casting these cool like projections on the floor beneath it, or a glass of water in your scene that when the light goes through it, it refracts into different directions and creates a cool pattern, you don't want to change, you, want, you don't want to turn off reflective and refractive caustics if that's the case. Um, but if you're working in a scene like this where it's very complex, there's not much going on, or well, it's very complex and there's a lot going on, so much so that it doesn't seem like there's much going on, it doesn't matter if reflective or refractive caustics are enabled or not. So I just disable them, it speeds things up a little bit and gets rid of fireflies. Perfect. So, next thing we're going to look at is tile size. Now, by default, tile size in Blender is 16 by 16 pixels. And by tile size, I'm talking about these little things. So. This right here is an individual tile going around rendering every single thing, and it's pretty dang small. Now, GPUs tend to thrive with larger tile sizes, and CPUs tend to thrive with smaller tile sizes. So there's this great add-on out there that automatically sets your tile size for you, and it's called the Auto Tile Size Add-on. So if we press Control-Alt-U, uh, this will open up our User Preferences menu again. Oop bring it back. <laughs> um, we can go to the add-ons tab here and in our search box we can type in auto tile size, right? I only typed in auto tile and it came up and by enabling it and clicking save user settings, if we come into our performance tab here, we can now see that we have this button that says auto tile size. Now we could manually set our tile size right here, but in this case since we have auto tile size, I'm just going to click the auto tile size button and it automatically sets the tile size for our scene. So in this case it shows that tile size is going to be 240 by 203. Now if we hit render, we can see that our tile size is much larger, right? And that's exactly what we're looking for because I have a GPU in this, so it tends to favor larger tile sizes. So good job, auto tile size. You just made our job a lot easier. All right, so the next thing we're gonna be looking at is the denoising and how we can actually optimize denoising a little bit. So I'm gonna enable denoising because we don't want a ton of noise in our image. Uh, and I'm going to drop the feature strength and regular strength down to 0.25. This is not going to optimize the scene at all. It just makes things a little bit sharper, all right? The thing that we can do to optimize our render time and optimize the denoising function is by enabling and disabling the different types of denoising that's going on in our scene. So there are four different types of materials it recognizes here. It recognizes diffuse materials, glossy materials, transmission materials, and subsurface materials, right? So in order to optimize this, we need to uncheck any boxes that have things in it about like the things that aren't in our scene. In this case, the only materials in this scene are diffuse materials, right? So I can uncheck all the direct and indirect lighting from glossy transmission and subsurface. This will slightly optimize denoising so it doesn't take as long. Now it's, it's going to be a very small change, but really anything that you can get is worth it when you're rendering, especially really long things, because those little fractions of seconds will add up over time. Anyway. That's about it for what we have to change. So let's go ahead and do a render and see just how long it takes. A few moments later. All right, so this time it only took a minute and 13 seconds to render, which is 73 seconds, right? So our optimized time was 130, unoptimized time, sorry, was 137 seconds, right? Our now optimized time is 73 seconds. Now, if we do the math, that means it is, uh, I mean, 137, that is a 46.7, percent decrease in t in time right that's pretty big uh if we're looking at that on a like a full scale right that's 137 seconds times 200 frames uh for this animation in particular divided by 60 is about 457 minutes of render time versus optimized which is 73 times 200 divided by 60 uh, which is only about 243 minutes that's a pretty big difference. I don't know about you, but I'd rather wait 243 minutes for it to render as opposed to 500 whatever that I said earlier. So really optimizing scenes is super crucial, especially if you're working in animations, because you don't want to wait 10 years for something to render. It's much easier to get it out of the way this way. So with that being said, I hope you guys can optimize your renders now, make things a little bit quicker and snappier so you don't have to wait quite as long for things to get done. Anyway, that about sums it up for this video, so I'll see you guys next time. Keep it real. If you guys want to expand your Blender knowledge to the max, head over to cgcookie.com and hook yourself up with a subscription for tons and tons of tutorial content on Blender, concept art, Unity, and a bunch of other things. It's, it's never ending. Party on, cookie. <laughs> what am I doing?